What's up? Welcome to the Stat Guy Show, episode 11. Uh, I have my special guest with me tonight, Giuseppe Gentile. What's up, man? How are you doing? All right, man. How about you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah, right on. You reached me during happy hour, so I'm going to have a couple of drinks while we're going here. Hey, what are you drinking there? A little crown and seven. Nice, nice. So what's up, man? Uh, what you got working on? What you working on right now? So right now we're getting ready for, um, I don't know, what season are we going into? Five or six? This will be six. Yep. Going to season six. Yeah, I lose track. But um, we're going to season <laughs> six, getting the car ready. Bunch of new things going on with um, Gucci. I'll be driving the Gucci Nova, Chris Michaels Gucci Nova this year. Um, we're doing a bunch of changes to the car, getting it ready, you know, getting everything else ready, trailer, extra motor, spare parts, all that stuff. Nice. Hey, before we get into all that, I want to start. I want to go way back here. All right. I want to know what kind of what kind of racing did you do before you started to get on street outlaws? What were you into? Um, you know, the usual thing, you know, we started on the streets, you know, San Fernando Valley out here. We used to race, um, do some street racing out here. Um, then it PSCA, Pacific Street Car Association, Mel Roth was running. I think 2000, I heard about it, which was like maybe their second season going. Got in on that, started doing the PSCA um, class racing. Did real good, you know, got came out uh, my first year in uh, the class real street started off at like 3000 pounds with a single turbo. And I was one of the first turbo cars out here, fuel injected and stuff. And uh, I don't know, by the third race, I had 350 pounds added to me because we were going so fast. So, uh, went on. Um, I think we came up short five points on the championship because we're breaking transmissions. We couldn't keep a transmission in the car, but um, yeah, so that was a, uh, did that PSCA and did pro street round with them till, 2010 or so i think 2010 2011 and then i took like a four or five year hiatus off of racing oh um, yeah okay. I, off. I just said you know what it's just too much it was it was becoming too much like work it's supposed to be fun right you know we do it as a hobby at least that's what i was doing as a hobby I wasn't making no money so um ran uh till about i don't know 2011 took four or five years off uh bob remillard called me up um who was we partnered up and he said hey you want to come out and race and i'm like Ugh. really didn't want to do it you know what i mean i was like man i'm happy right now stress-free you know i'm just going yeah. out and, and doing my thing and uh he convinced me to do it and uh we came out we started racing we didn't really know what we we're gonna do we built the car we finished uh that black mustang with the blue flames which you saw in um no prep mm -hmm. game that we ran we did really good out here. We won like Bodie. Um, Bodie had a like a point series out here. We ran all year. We were um, came out and we won that in 2018. And then um, went on and Bodie called, was calling me up and said, man, you got to do this, uh, this Street Outlaws No Prep Kings thing, you know? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I just didn't understand. I didn't even know what was going on, right? I didn't know. Um, he was like, man, you got to do this thing. I'm like, dude, he would call me. He's like, but it's like in two weeks. I'm like, dude, I can't be ready for a race in two weeks. Don't even know nothing. Travel over, you know, because we would always race local. So we never traveled all over the country. So um, we got, uh, I convinced Bob, who was, uh, who owned the car, the, that Mustang there. We, you know, um, said, hey, man, we got to do this. No prep king. So it came around in Tucson, uh, season two, I think it was. And we did like, it was one of their final races. We had to race our way in. We were able to race our way in at the time. So we raced our way in. We got in. I don't know. I think we went to the second round or something. We did okay. Yeah. And then it was like, oh man, I like this. This is cool. It was a big crowd, a big turnout. And it's like something we got to do. So um, we started doing a little bit towards getting on there, talking to the producer. And um, we got lucky. Sam's like, man, you're on. You know, if you want to do it. And I said, yeah, we'll do the whole season. And we showed up season three and the rest was history there, man. We showed up and uh, did good. I think we finished sixth in points the first year. First race we went out, I was telling, uh, um, you know, earlier, we, we we showed up to that track and we hauled ass. We made it, you know, we, we were running good. The track was good. I was like, dude, this track is better than what we race on back home, right? Like the track in Maryland. Yeah. Good. Um we went out. I'm like, dude, we got this shit. You know, we went to the finals. It rained out. We yep. we had everybody covered. I felt like at that race, there was nobody there that was going to beat us. I mean, we were going over 200, 
you know, in the eighth there, the car was hauling ass. Um, and it rained out and Ryan said, Hey dude, we had Ryan in the finals. I'm like, dude, I got this guy. You know, I got Ryan. <laughs> and it rained. He said, what do you want to do? And I said, dude, we gotta, we'll go to the next track. No problem. You know, we got this shit, you know, showed up to the next track and dude, it was a totally different track. I mean, it was, it was stripped. It was bare. And that car wasn't having it, you know, and, uh, yeah. But downhill from there, like I said, we finished sixth in points. We did a pretty good, you know, right. pretty good the first year. The car wasn't right, so we knew got to start doing something, you know, build, you know, build something. Um, so we started working on the new car, the new Mustang. I was like, man, this car, the old car was only 42% of the weight on the rear tires. And at 3,100, it just didn't have enough weight on the rear tires, right? Motors mm -hmm. too forward and and all that we can get all into that but and then struggled built a new car and stuff like that built the new screwball mustang how did it feel so like your your season three it was the first race now ryan had ryan had run, taken runner up the last two seasons before that yes. um but ryan was really fast I, i'm sure you knew oh, who yeah. ryan martin was at that point but yeah. how did it feel to make it to the finals against ryan in your first actual oh. race of the season I was on fucking cloud nine, right? Like, I mean, I was like, dude, I'm the shit, you know, this, uh, they're going to fucking name the show after me or something. You know, that's, <laughs> that was my attitude, you know, like, okay, like, dude, I got this shit. It's fucking, oh, these guys aren't even ready for what we got. We showed up on 36 inch Hoosiers. Nobody had that tire. Right. So I'm like, dude, you know, we tested. And the thing was, we only tested once, you know, which we should have tested more. We only tested once on a prep. We couldn't get a no prep trek out here in California. You know, they yeah. wouldn't do that. So we showed up on a 36 Hoosier and the thing just ran good. And then after that, hey, all those guys were on Mickey's come to find out now, nobody, everybody, nobody's on a Mickey. Everybody's on a 36 inch Hoosier, right? We were ahead of the curve then. It just wasn't so much, you know, on the trickier tracks, we'd shake. You had to figure that out, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Um, so that was your first season of no prep Kings, but real season. What was your first, what was the first show you did on the street? Was it Fast in America? Yes, I think we did Fast in America in Vegas driving. Um, I drove Chris Michaels, who owns the, the Gucci Nova also, um, his black Mustang, which I um, wired. I that was a hectic deal, too. So we were like, okay, let's do this thing. It was a last minute deal. Um, Josh Deeds did a bunch of stuff, suspension, shut it up, put all Mensers on that stuff, on that car. Um, we bought it from a buddy of mine and then wired it like two days before dynoed it and showed up to Vegas, never tested, showed up to the street thing. Um, got it figured out. We, we did some testing um, on the street over there. We made like four or five runs and fucking car just hauled ass. You know, we did good on that and fast in America on JJ's deal there. And uh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Talk and, about, talk about that experience. That was your first experience with JJ. I'm guessing, right. Just because he, he doesn't do no prep King. So um, yeah, so that was that was different. You know, what I mean, the street. It, you know, it's it's cool. It's it's a whole different thing. I mean, we're fucking all night, dude. It's crazy. We show up to that Vegas road, and do two cars. Excuse me, barely fit side by side. I mean, it's a fucking <laughs> sketchy road, dude. I'm like, fuck. Are we gonna do this? You know, like I'm, I'm not even sure. Like, is this? And I'm like, well, everybody else is doing. It. I said, fuck it. And Chris was like, I'm like, dude, I don't want to wreck this car. You know, you got a bunch of money in this thing. He's like, dude, do what you, whatever you got to do. And I was like, okay, you sure? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, all right. Well, we'll play bumper cars now. Now, because you can cross lanes on JJ's deal, you can do whatever, right? I'm like, this is fucking nuts. So when you put it in your head, your front, you know, you got a bunch of people there. What's on? If the guy comes over, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not lifting. In my mind, I'm not lifting. But uh. <laughs> Had the car set up pretty good and it fucking went right down yeah so it, it got quicker and quicker i just had to get used to the whole arm drop thing i was leaving early and you know oh up yeah he's up and fuck yeah it. chris chris rankin a couple weeks ago was talking about that on the show and he was saying that it's something you definitely got to learn and you gotta you gotta get good at that you gotta watch the guy it's all that was a cool experience at first i didn't like it then i'm like well you know what it adds a little twist to some of the guys who are slower, you got to really figure out a strategy. And and by the end of it, I liked it. And, and man, we had probably one of the faster cars there that night, you know? So, yeah. 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 Team Kelly did good. You guys made it to the finals. We made it to the finals. Yeah. So we did really good. Um, And yeah, that was a, that was cool, man. With all the guys there, Bodie and stuff like that was hauling ass with his car. 
dude, just big money shit. You know what I mean? Gambling and you know, it was it was a different experience, man. And we went up till the sun came up. You know, went up all yeah. night. Uh, I mean, it was I don't know, finished at seven, eight in the morning. So it was you know like back in the days, you know, when we used to, you know, street race. You know, yeah, so, for sure. Experience. It was cool. Nice. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about last season of No Prep Kings. How do you think? How did your season go? How do you think you made most of the races more towards the end of the season? I recall. So the season went good. I, I we came out with uh, came out with a screw blow Mustang for a couple races, uh, which we built. You know, I built here at the house. You know, me and Bob Remillard, that was uh, my partner on that car. Um, so we built that thing. You know, obviously purpose built for no prep kings, motors in the right spot, and everything. That that fucking car was gonna be. Fast, right like we first second hit 960s you know to the 60 foot the car was running great just couldn't figure you know just had to get some more testing like I literally rolled it out finished it painted it you know rolled it into the trailer and went to the no prep kings race no testing which was a bad mistake right went to field tech dyno it made the horsepower i'm like damn we got no testing here you know so we showed up to the race tried to test there but that never goes good so we we ended up going a couple races and then just all kinds of shit happened, uh, blew up a motor. Um, and then, uh, I was like, man, we're done. I was driving home, talked to Bodie, which was driving the Nova and said, Hey man, why don't you, I want to run my car. Why don't you talk to Chris? You know, which me and Chris have been buddies too. And Bodie and everybody for years already. And I was originally fitted to drive the Nova, um, the Gucci Nova, um, too. And, uh, he said, man, why don't you think about it? I'm like, oh, man, I don't know. And then I said, you know what? That's not a bad idea. So, you know, hooked up with Chris Michael. Um, and uh, he said, yeah, let's do this, man. He was ready. And I'm like, man, we got to change some shit around on the car. I'm like, dude, I don't like the turbos. I know they're not going to work for this no prep stuff, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I got a bunch of money. And I'm like, all right, well, let's see what we can do. Let's make the best of it. Let's see how fast we can go. And he's like, yeah, that's all I want to do. I want I built this fucking car. Let's see what we can do with it, right? So, um mm -hmm. Went out, uh, and we did good. We actually, no testing either, showed up. We we tested one, well, we went one time, made one run. It was raining. You know, it's it's hard back east for us. We got to fly. Everybody's got to fly out there. That's one thing we got to do. You know, it's, you don't think it's it's tough. When you're not actually there, I can't work on the car. We can't, you know, go yeah. work on the car. It's like, we got to fly there to work on the car. So we fly out, we test, we made one run. It was raining and shit like that. We were able to get one run off. I said, like, man, the car don't feel right. Did a couple things. Showed up. We started. Uh, it had a hall tech on the car. So that's when we called uh, Kenny Lutz, my buddy, because um, he knows the hall tech and uh, he's a great tuner and everything else. So we we hooked up with Kenny. We got him out there and fucking car, you know, ended up, I don't know, last last couple races. We were we were doing good. We were, Hell yeah. Yep. And then. Got everybody all motivated, and now we're going fucking crazy for the next season. Yeah, talk about the competition last year. That because you you've been there. I mean, you've been so there the year three, since season three. Season three, they weren't as fast, right? Like season three wasn't. It was more. It's got out of fucking control now. Right? So like <laughs> come to season four or five. Season five was fast. I'm like, dude, these guys are flying on this shit. You know, right? Mm -hmm. So Ryan, everybody's got it figured out. Um, you got a bunch of guys just flying. You got, I mean, I don't know. You can name a bunch of Justin, uh, you know, all these guys, everybody was, was really getting it figured out. Um, so I knew I was like, man, Chris, we got to get a pro charger on that thing. Right. You know, we got to get a pro charger. I don't want to do it unless we get a pro charger or a screw blower was really what, what it was, you know, like, you know, um, so seeing that season there, seeing what the guys were running, I know we ran we ran a couple good runs. Alabama was good. Um, we raced David Gates. He was driving Kai Kelly's car. He got us by like half a car at that one. You know, uh, one round was first round took us out. But and I know what we ran. I'm like, okay, these guys are you know they're fast, you know, and uh, so we we decided, okay, let's finish off the season and we'll get ready for uh, next year, which we're coming into this season here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what were your thoughts about now? You you experienced both the team attack and which you which you raced in, and then the 
they had the grade eight last year. Uh, what were your feelings about both of those things? I think the grade eight was bullshit. Personally, that was my thing with that whole grade eight deal. It's if somebody's out in points right away, they still have a chance to earn more points. So the guys who were behind or how do you catch up? You know what I mean? So if you end up getting lucky or getting good draws early, you end up in the grade eights, you can earn more points. Somebody from behind can't come up, you know what I mean? With points, right? Like how do I, I'm starting late in the season. How am I going to earn more points instead of helping out the guys a different way? It's like, wait a minute. So the guys who are already number one or two in points can keep, keep moving out and the gap just got bigger and bigger. So I don't like that grade eight, I'm, you know, bullshit, whatever I'm saying, but I don't like that whole grade eight deal. I don't, I don't think that's a good deal. I don't know. I've heard they're not going to do that this year. They're going to do something else. Um, you know, yeah, uh, I heard this is just what I've heard and nothing, you know, official, not official. It, would, it would be something where, and I, and I do like this idea. If this is true, it would be something where the, the 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 last eight so like if you finish third round right so not semis but a quarterfinals yeah those guys would get to race the next race right so that yep. way like we were doing good at the end of the year we would have been able to race into that and earn more points right so yep. something like that i think that would be cool if that did happen but i don't know what they're gonna do yeah no i mean you're right as far as not because looking at the stats there was only 14 different people that raced in the grade eight last year Yes. And of those 14, only 11 of them actually raced more than one time. So yes. really you only had 11 guys for the most part racing in the grade eight every single week, which didn't change up anything. You know what I mean? It was the same guys. Every time. Yeah. It just helps the guys get a little further ahead, which yeah. <laughs> basically that's what it did. Yeah. 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 For sure. Uh, all right. So let's talk about, let's talk about this upcoming season. So you're going to be running Gucci again. Um, are you, the rules haven't come out yet, but does that matter to you? Are you sticking with the same combo you had? Are you yeah, changing the combo? Picked, you know, had to decide early, right? We can't wait for the rules because they'll usually come out like a week before, you know. We'll be, <laughs> yeah. we'll be driving to the race, and then they'll say, oh, here's the rules. You know, and that that's expected because that's been every fucking year, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so what we did was, I guess I got the hoodie on, the Pro Charger. Yeah. So we already had a big motor, 11 2 inch, you know, 11 2 deck, 4 9 Noonan. Um, so it was either like, okay, if we're going to go to the screw and, you know, really, I don't know. I looked at the combos and thought, what's the best for no prep, right? Like, what combo is the easiest way to get down? And I feel like the Pro Charger on shittier tracks all around is 100% the best combo, right? You know, when the track's shitty, the Pro Charger takes care of itself, it'll just make less power, you'll get down. Um, screw blowers are fast with the current weight and everything, um, but I think they're going to do something. From what I've heard and everything, they're going to do something to the screw blowers. So I think we made the right choice, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, so we got, uh, you know, that noon in, which I'm hoping makes, you know, an extra 100 horse over – you know, your four, eight bore space stuff or whatever, regular Hemi stuff. So if we can make, you know, a little bit more power and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. I've, now I've seen a bunch of people seems like are switching to the Noonan this year. Yes. Why do you, why do you think that is? What, what's, what's going on with that? Well, I mean like the Noonan we got is a four, nine bore space raised cam deal. Push rod angles are taken care of. Um, it's really a bitching deal. So like the bigger, Bigger bore space, you know, unshrouds the valve a little bit, flows a little bit. Uh, you can put bigger valves in it. So we got, you know, big – letting every these guys always give me a hard time, I'm sure, on the comments, but I let everything out. But, you know, what are you going to do? Fuck it. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Everybody's trying to go as fast as they can, right? But um, you can run the bigger valve. So we got the big outlaw heads on it, and uh, it wouldn't be legal for anything for, like, NHRA. So um, got the big bore space, which helps, right? Uh, raised cam. It's just a purpose-built – like a badass race motor. Oh yeah. Um, we got some cubic inch in that thing. Don't want to say you know the exact cubic inch, but it's big. Yeah. And and um, the turn that blower. You know the the pro charger. We'll see what the rules come out with. If they're going to allow the one forty four or the one forty, but um, mm -hmm. we got we got one of each. We're ready to go there, and then we'll buy whatever makes the most power or the rules allow. Um, and we're ready to you know come out. Hell yeah. Um, now, since season three, that was the first year you raced, you raced a full schedule. You haven't raced a full schedule since then. 
No. Is the plan, is the plan this year to race all yeah, exactly. 15? Yeah, that's, you know, we partnered with Chris Michael. We're able to – I had to drive the truck and trailer before and stuff like that myself, you know, and uh, it's – it was hard, right? Like I got to drive, I got to go to work. So I'm flying, driving this and that. It just wasn't happening. Right. So uh, with Chris, we got, we got the team, we merged our teams together. We brought, I brought all the guys over for my team and and who Chris had, which him, Mark Washington, Mark will drive the truck and trailer to the races. I just fly in and out. We can get it done. So yeah, we're the whole, we're planning on hundred percent. We're going to every race. And uh, I mean, we're going for the championship. It's not like we're just, ah, we're going to show up, hang out we're going to win, right? Like that's our goal is to go to win. We, I mean, we've been, it's every day. You don't think, so I'm not working on the car before I had to work on the car, build the car. Now it's just, okay, we dropped the car off at Larry Jeffers. He's working on it. Um, But it's still, man, it takes a lot. Every day phone calls, we spend hours together. We got group calls, right? Like, okay, we need to do this. And I'm bad at organizing shit like i didn't write down shit for today's interview right like sponsors this that you know so i'm horrible so chris is on me like okay dude what do we need to do every day like what do we need to order what do we need and i'm like okay we need this this and he slowly gets it out of me knows how to work me um but uh we got the car larry's and that turned into that car i mean i don't know if you've seen it but it's Mm -hmm. beautiful car right the car was amazing so that front end taken off those doors doing a carbon i told chris i said look dude if we don't get that car light enough in the front if it's too heavy with the zoomies and shit it changes the game if that car is too heavy in the front we are not going to win right like it's easy how do we take weight off and that front end was repaired it was fiberglass so we got larry jeffers making a mold off of that front end it's going to be a carbon fiber front end Motors moved up two inches, you know, for the pro charger. Now we got to get the motor up higher. Um, and it just turned into, you know, a big prod, bigger wing. We got a bunch of shit going on. Like, I mean, it turned into carbon doors. Now we got, you know, so we can get the weight off and put the weight where we want it. Um, so we had playing around that and we got a spare second motor, complete second motor coming for next year. We'll have that. I mean, that's the thing. It's, I think next year is going to be, Five weeks in a row, we know that first, right? So far, we know five weeks in June. Yeah. You got to have a lot of parts. Yeah. You, gotta, you better have another motor because if you break a motor with today's stuff, you can't get parts. You heard a crank. You heard, I mean, you're done. So yep. to win this championship, it's going to be endurance. It's going to be – it's going to take a lot to win it, right? So we got all the parts. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, you got to have two of every fucking thing, right? Yep. And that's literally where we're going to. You know, it's just – We'll have a spare motor ready, trans, converter, third members, you know, all that shit. So, and it's hard to do that. It's hard to organize. We're always like, man, do we have those parts? We can't look at the trailer. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's there. It's in Missouri. So we're like always trying to figure it out, but yeah, it's, uh, we're working on it, man. It's going to be a great season for us. I plan on, uh, um, we plan on doing really, really good. I think I got, you know, I got one of the, you know, my crew, everybody's ready to do it. So, uh, Man, we're going to have a good season, I hope. Yeah, now you mentioned, uh, obviously, you want to win. Everybody wants to win. Everybody, yeah, everybody's goal is to win. Why why show up if you're not going to win, right, you know? Do you think about any – do you set any goals, like, you know, goals for yourself as far as the, making every race or finishing so, in the top ten or, you know what I mean, like actual goals for yourself? Do you set any? So the goal, I mean, is to, to obviously – I think realistically – Again, you know, we're like as a team, right? Like I'm like, man, I'm, you know, we're spending a bunch of money here and this and Mm -hmm. that. We're not, you know, not one of the paid guys or whatever, right? So right now we're trying to build our name. It's going to take a lot. But I think if we finish, I want to finish top five for sure. You know, I want to win. But realistically, hey, if everything's got to go right, you know, to do it. But uh, yeah, there's got to be some luck in there. Yeah. Oh, man, there's got to be some luck. Draw. You don't know who you draw first round. You draw Ryan the first fight. Couple right you know, okay, it's gonna be tough, you know. Not that we can't beat them because we beat them. Yeah, you know? yeah. I still haven't seen that episode. I gotta watch it, but you know, <laughs> I should have it like on replay. I should be watching that shit all the time. But uh, um, um, what we're, we're talking about going into goals, to, yeah, yeah. So the goal is to win, and you know, and hopefully we got enough parts and enough stuff, and the team's good enough, and the card's good enough. 
But with this, as the way the races are, it's not like a normal series where you can go one race and then you have another race, I don't know, a month later. So you can work on the car and work on the setup, right? Yeah. If you don't show up and your shit ain't right, you're racing next weekend, next weekend, next weekend, next weekend. So the guy who has his shit right, right off the bat, is mm-hmm. going to do good, right? Because you don't have time to correct or fix or move a motor or do this or or raise the motor or or test, right? It's going to be, okay, we got to get to the next race. We got to get to the next race. We got to get, we got, you know. So yeah. whoever's got their shit right, you know, is going to going to be there, which is like the guys who are already running good, you know. I'm right. just hoping we get enough testing, and I'm hoping we can put 30 runs on it before we go out and, you know, run a set of rods and put some rods in it. And if we can run 30 runs, I feel like we, we should be really good. You know? Yeah. You know, you mentioned, uh, you know, the first five in a row, if you – you slip up at all at the beginning. I mean, I don't, I'm interested to see how they're going to do it this year because you got, you already had 40 some guys racing their way in, like in the invitational last year. There was yes. up to like 43 guys. Now there's more guys coming back who didn't even race last year, like Eric Kay, who will be on Team Cali, yep. and Kelly Blue Blah, and all those guys will be back for this year. And then you got all the guys who raced in um, Futures last year who were probably trying to make it into the invitational. And then you got all the brand new guys who will probably be in Future. It's like, I don't know how they're going to do it all, man. I don't know if there's going to be a huge futures class or if they're going to be a huge race your way in class every week because the more people they allow into the invitational to race their way in, the tougher the competition is going to be. And it's, if you slip up early, you're going to be racing your way in for many weeks in a row. That's, that's the goal, right, is try not to race your way in. So yeah. not only – it's not qualifying. you got to have luck of the draw, who you get, right, for the yep. first couple races and stuff like that. And then if you're good, though, you're going to go rounds – and long as like season three, when I came in, we went to the finals, the first race. I never had to race my win. It's a whole different experience. You get three test hits. You get to to work on the car. You're not, you know, when you're racing your way in, like we did with Gucci at the last. I mean, dude, you can't try anything. You can't. You're just trying to make it right. So yeah. it changes. And, and that does. So it's like really depending on how the outcome and even for the top guys. I mean, they have a bad couple races, man. It can it can change their whole season. Yeah. So instance, season two, Lizzie and Kai were racing their way in when I showed up to Arizona, which was like close to the last last race. They were still racing their way in season two. Yeah. And then Kai goes on season three and four and five to run her up, right? Or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, that yeah. season two, he was racing, he was struggling. I don't know what they had different or whatever, but they were racing their way in when I showed up on season two. We had to, I don't think we ran them, but I remember they were in the group of the race your way ins. Yeah. 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 So that tells you, you, you know, shit can change real quick. You know, that's I'm, I'm hoping for us, right? We come out and we're on top. And Hell yeah. You and we're talking about how we won the championship. <laughs> That'd be fucking amazing. Uh, so I talked about, I brought up Eric Kay because last year Team Cali really kind of took a step forward, in my opinion, as far as the whole team aspect and, and how competitive with Bodie Jr. doing extremely oh. well. You know what I mean? Um, Bowman was doing awesome um, before, you know, before the crash and stuff like that. Um, Brandon James was Brandon James. Brandon James. Brandon James won that race. Uh, but oh, uh, yeah. well, <laughs> he, he, and he, dude, I was standing. So we made the run before we did the big tire final. And we, I was standing. I went by the fire guys and I saw the run and I'm standing there and I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Brandon was out, right? Like, I'm looking. I'm on <laughs> yeah. the left lane. I'm right there. I'm like, dude. Brandon was out. Like, it looked like he was out. I'm like, what happened? His wind light came on. And, but in Brandon, if you ask Brandon, he'll tell you the same. I mean, his car, the Pecker extended. Yeah, goes up. Yeah. You know, uh, um, his car was down. Uh, Jerry Burt's car was on the fucking ground, right? And you got yeah. the Pecker extender. He tripped the lights first. I mean, that's. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Brandon's shit was running really good, you know, in, in Colorado. And, uh, yeah. but yeah, so Team Cali was, you know, great last year. And then now you're going to be full go. Eric Kay's coming back. I mean, yes. I, well, I don't say I want to touch on something really quick because you know, Eric Kay said he's going to win all 15 races. Yeah, he oh, did. Fucking <laughs> Let me tell he you, did. Eric Kay, I'm showing up. He ain't going to, he can't win all 15 fucking races. I'll tell you that right now. Well, well, Eric's out of control. Dude. That's my boy, but he's funny. Yeah, Eric. Well, we talked about goals and he's like, well, why do I do this if I don't say I'm going to win every week? So, yeah, no, no, exactly. Yeah, you go. Yeah, exactly. You want to, you want to win every week. Right. I mean, that's a plan. I want to win every week, but right. Talk, 
talk about Team Cali this year and how it's how how much better it is when you have a bunch of guys who are running really extremely well. How that helps all you guys as a team and, and how you're doing everything. So I think if everybody, you know, we share information on how fast guys are going, we can judge what the other guys are going. So like Bodie Jr. can come and say, man, I went this number, X number, and this guy beat me by this much. That helps a lot, right? Like that tells me what I need to go to race him. Yep. Like, okay, you ran this, he beat me by half a car. Well, fuck, I got to run that number, right? So it's 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 huge, right? Like that whole deal, sharing that information, even though our combinations might be different and stuff, just sharing of how fast and the other guys are that you're racing. Cause with no time, you don't know. Right. So this, this will help give us a gauge. And I mean, we should have an awesome team. I mean, Bodie senior stepping up, he's do, redoing his whole car. I don't want to say mm -hmm. about his combo, but it's going to be, it'll be, he's not going to be playing around. Bodie's coming out senior junior brand. And we obviously know you've seen, I don't know if you've seen it. He's got his new car out. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Everything's going to be fast. Bowman. He's, fucking just nuts he's gonna do whatever it takes to win right so bowman's on the verge of you know he wants to get a win um eric k we already seen he was he was good and fast so eric k's coming out and uh man i don't even know who else am i missing i was uh um james strange he switched oh, to yeah, strange, yeah. last year and his car picked up i mean he's gonna be you know he'll be a player um you know we got we, we'll have a serious team now you know and i think all the guys are going to make it this year right like that's the goal like i'm surprised because you know you say 15 races this short amount of time people usually bow out but yeah you know, he's you know talking about doing the whole deal so nice yeah yeah, oh, yeah i'm excited man um okay let's talk about you brought it up earlier uh the mustang you drove on fast in america yes so we'll be bringing that out so that car is going so right now the nova's at larry jeffers getting redone painted and all that stuff um once that comes off in line is the Mustang, which is the midnight money. That car had just a regular 347. I mean, 1400 horsepower deal, you know, yeah. um, that car now will come out with a, a Visner all billet. You know, we're going to switch that thing. We'll probably put 28, 10, five. Cause that's what, you know, everything's going to the small tire stuff. That thing will have a Visner, you know, big inch, small block four, six deal. Um, I'll bill it. It'll have a pro charger on it. It'll have a Liberty five speed in it. Nice. And uh, we ain't fucking around with that thing. When that thing comes out, we're trying to push Larry to get that car done. So anybody out there who's got any pool, call Larry and tell him we need to see that Mustang out because we're trying to get that car done and start hitting the streets with that and do the shows and try to, you know, just get into everything they got going and try to win, you know, show up and, and uh try to beat these guys you know so um that car will be coming back out and uh it'll have the best of everything too that car will have the best it can have and uh it'll be fast it'll be a player for sure so that is that's your plan now for is to get that car in small tires and do a lot of street stuff because we haven't seen you much on the streets so the um, plan is to try to do the street stuff yes yeah. so so if we can get that car done here shortly which we're pushing for now um we will do a lot of the street stuff we'll, we'll get back on the street and stuff and, and when the Cali and mega cash days and stuff like that, we'll go out and do those races hopefully. And nice. Uh, yeah. That's the plan. Cool. cool. Uh, Giuseppe, if you want, we're going to take some questions from people who are watching right now. Okay. You got a question posted up. Um, oh yeah. Chris Michael said, uh, we're going to do a tear top tattoo. <laughs> You're going to do a what? You go, no, no, whatever. You go oh. ahead and pick whatever you want off of there, I guess. Um, You you mentioned about watching an episode of Beating Ryan. Do you watch Street, Street Outlaws much? Do you watch yourself on TV? Or how does that go? No, because, dude, I don't like the way I, you know, I just like, oh, man, I try, I don't watch it. Believe it or not, my family, I don't want to say that we, you know, the show's good and uh, the guys at work, but I don't like watching it. I'm like, dude. So I do not watch it. You know, I'll I'll watch a few. I'm not gonna lie, it's not like I never, but I don't like Monday nights and turn it on. I'm just like, dude, we'll do it, but I don't watch it, right? So like I'll race it and do the thing, but I don't watch it. You know, maybe I should to see what guys are talking shit about me. So I'll be like, all right, that motherfucker, you know. But uh, <laughs> you know, I haven't heard nothing, so I don't watch it. So I just do what we do. So um, like I said, I haven't seen the one where we beat Ryan, which I should probably flip that on and, and do it, but. I mean, I'm so busy, you know, right? Like, it's like, go to, go to work, do this, do that. And 
Um, yeah, so no, I, I don't watch them all. I watch, you know, a few, but I don't watch them all. We got a good good question from Luis here. It says, uh, are you still thinking about doing OnlyFans with your old lady? Well, my old lady won't be on it. I'm trying to get my I'm trying to get other girls on the OnlyFans, but uh <laughs> I talked to my lady. She said I can do it, but we gotta get, you know, I got a, a lot of girls inquiring and stuff. But um uh right now, yeah. maybe the next couple months we'll have the OnlyFans released. Hell yeah. Get yeah, weird. Make some extra money, dude. We gotta try to make it to all these races, you know. <laughs> <laughs> do what you gotta do, man. Right, we gotta do whatever we gotta do. Uh, so what do you just tell me? What do you do when you're not racing or working on your or working on your race cars? What do you like to do? Man, I don't know. You know, it consumes so much, right? Like the hobbies are at the door. I used to like, you know, dirt bike riding. I got I got a dirt bike that I haven't ridden in years. I got you know Honda 450 that I haven't ridden in years. Uh, just try to spend time with the family. Really, you know, with the free time now, it's. Uh, because once we start racing every weekend, every weekend, so just, um, man, you know, I don't know. Really, you know, for as far as, like, hobbies go, it's just, Not just racing, man, just drag racing. That's all. It consumes everything. If I got time for something else, then we're missing something on the car, right? So right now I'm all, and that's yeah. my problem is if I can only focus on one fucking thing, you know? Yeah. So sitting around the house ain't getting done. Believe me, dude, it's all about what we got to do, what we got to do to make the car better. And I'm obsessive like that, you know? So, so when I get into something, it's, that's it. And it sucks because it's hard, you know, it's, there's no balance, right? That's all I do. Right. Um, but yeah, so kind of boring in that part, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so yeah, my wife doesn't let me go out and party too much or anything. So, you know, it's so like you go racing, but you can't go out and party too much. So I'm like, all right, all right. Uh, we got a question from Philip here. It says, "Who's your rival, and who do you want to line up against the most?" If Philip was fast enough, we would line up against him. But he's not. He's not ready yet. You know, his little motor he's building or whatever. He's not ready. But uh, you know, I don't know right now. I don't have like a particular rival. You know, I, I could tell you in the past, like like last season. Callie Mills kept getting us right. She would just inch us out in the turbo car. So it was like, okay, you got a turbo car. We got a turbo car. And man, she would kept, kept getting us. She's going to be fast. She's got a screw blower setup coming out. Uh, but, yeah. um, I don't have a particular rival yet. You know, I think you got to be, once we get going and mixing it up, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out who the rival's going to be. Yeah. I want to be yeah. disliked, right? You know, you want to be the guy. That no one like right now they draw they draw me and they're like oh they're they're not too sad they're like well that's not a bad draw right I want to be yeah. like fuck you know yeah. like, I don't want to race him so that's the goal you know yeah that's where the point where you just you know you show up to the track and you're feared and people are jumping up and down when they beat you because it actually means something right so that's the goal yeah no so when I told uh, some people that I was having you on tonight on the show. Um, some guys were like, yeah, that's good. Giuseppe will be a good interview. He's he's pretty outspoken and stuff like that. Do you think – do you hold back on the TV show? Do you – do sometimes, you know. I do. And this year, that's going to change. I'm a, I'm just going to say what I – you know, what I want this year. You know what I mean? I'm going to say shit. And, and and not that I'm not – I'm not a shit talker. But, you know, if I'm not running good, I don't lie, though. If I, I, I'm not the type of guy – I'm not going to say my car's fast or we're running good. If we're not right, so if the car gets fast, yeah, I'm gonna get a little cocky. I'm not cocky, but I'll be confident on, yeah, you gotta, you know, and I know what these cars should run and everything else. So, um, like I knew, you know, what we were running, which was fast, but I knew it wasn't enough for certain combos. So, how can you talk shit when you know, you know, what I mean, like, so this year, if I'm, you know, if I don't hold back, you'll, yeah, we'll talk, we'll mix it up. Like, we got a John Scrotum, Odom. I don't yeah. remember. Him. We got a ten thousand dollar locked up with him for who's going to finish higher in points next season. This coming really, season. so we can wow. lock that in. We got ten thousand dollar bet because he was talking shit. I'm like, dude, I've been to two fucking races. You know, he's like, oh, I'm number eight points or nine in points. So next year, or this year, not next year. This year, we got a race locked up with him, or we got a you know ten thousand dollar locked up with him to see who finishes higher in points. So we got that going and we're, we're, you know, we'll bet and we'll, we'll gamble and stuff like that. We're going to have a, a good year, you know, hopefully. Oh yeah. This is a great question from Mr. Bodie himself. It says, uh, 
I don't know if you can see it. Jay Bundy. Can you read it? At the Street Outlaws. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. A huge impact, right? The Street Outlaws has been, I mean, you can't deny it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest thing going right now. Everybody's into it. Uh, it's changed. It's helped a lot of shit keep businesses going, right? Like, the, the, the fans are amazing, right? Like, there's... You go to these these races, and I mean the fans. It's packed. It's it's a whole different experience. So for us, for me at least, right now with out here in Cali, I mean it sucks to say, but we don't have much going on at all. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, it's a huge impact for for drag racing for the you know for us at least. You know, going out there and racing, and uh, I mean for the whole deal, it's just a big big deal and it seems to get bigger you think oh that's not gonna get bigger last year i thought oh there's no way these guys are gonna make all these races and these guys make all the fucking races right like you think oh like this year okay 15 races are they gonna be pulling in you know future street outlaws because guys don't make it but somehow everybody makes it right so (laughs) so i don't know dude i'm done estimating that right so um and i think it's getting bigger and bigger every year um so who knows who knows where this will end up so I'm hoping it keeps growing and and uh, we'll stay on as long as we can. I saw a question earlier from Janet. Uh, what do you what do you do that for work? Just everything that allows you to go and travel and do all this racing for all Ooh. these Prep Kings events. Oof. I don't want to talk about too much about work, but um, I work for the studios. So I work for Disney Studios here. Oh, um, okay. stuff and um, it's going to be tough. That's going to be tough, and and I'll take a couple of days off. And usually, so what I'll do is, and this is, people don't know this, right? Like people are like, man, it's amazing. People come up to me and like, it's amazing. You do this for a living. I'm like, dude, I got to go to work on, on Monday. So like, I'll literally like at the end of the season, I'll fl- I'll go to work in the morning, catch a Thursday flight at like noon or one. um, And then be there, you know, whatever race it is, it takes, gets there at midnight, right? We race Friday, Saturday, fly out Sunday morning and back to work Monday. So it was like seven days a week. So for for guys like me and stuff like that, it's 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 tough. So I don't get to get the whole week off and and do that. But we're gonna try to switch it up. I'm gonna take a little extra time off because I really want to take this year serious and be like as professional as we can. I don't want no excuses, right? I want to be able to say, hey, I can work on the car during the week too and stuff like that. So we might take a little leave of absence this year. We'll see what happens. Nice, nice. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, if you want right now, uh, do you want to take some time to – where can people follow you on social media, all your social medias? What do you got going on? Well, I got the one – I don't even – I'm horrible at social media, right? So I don't really do much on it. I don't post shit. I'll tell you that. I need to step it up. Um, but I don't know. Follow me on my my Facebook, Giuseppe Gentile. I don't even know. I got a few of them. I got like three of them. But uh, – the yep. one that has the Gucci Nova with me, like looking all stupid, leaned over it. That's the one uh, I usually use. Um, and then I have an Instagram, Giuseppe Gentile. Also, I think I don't even know, dude. You know, so I, I don't have any of that shit written down. But you got to get that going, man. Yeah, I know. And follow um, Chris Michael. He's got, you know, he's got a, a Facebook, and we got bad intentions and stuff like that. So that um, Chris Michael's got his Facebook page and stuff, which he posts a lot of shit too. What we'll be doing throughout the year, and I'll be. I, I got to get going on it, but, um, so yeah. I know you didn't make a list or you write down a list, but do you want to shout out some sponsors for this upcoming? So who do we get season? today? I talked to, um, we're going to be running, uh, LAT oil. Uh, it went mute. It went mute, Giuseppe. I can't hear you. I don't know what happened. Says you muted yourself. <laughs> Can't hear you. Did you hit the button? Did you hit the mic button? There you go. Oh. No. Nope. There you go. Yeah. Like, dude, I didn't even touch it, dude. That's all fucking. I got the powers, man. I can use that. So, um, so talking about we got LAT oil. Danny talked to him today. We're gonna be getting a bunch of, you know, which man, end of the year we had that in the car. 
amazing how the motor looks. So we got that. We got a pro charger. I didn't write nothing down. Um, you know, we got a bunch of uh, Larry Jeffers. We got, I'm going to miss a bunch of shit. I'll have to post something, but, uh, um, you know, uh, Moran, we got some Moran injectors going in there, fuel tech. Uh, what else? I don't know. That's all I can think of. All right. All right. I got one more question for you, Giuseppe, and this is what I want to know. Um, so I've been shaving my head for a really long time, okay, like okay. 25 years, and yeah. I'm starting to recede a little bit, okay? So I know um, at some point I'm going to have to really, like, shave it all the way down like you. How yes. how do you keep it so damn shiny? How does that work? Well, I usually – I get a little lazy, and then it looks like shit, right? But um, that's just a natural glow, man. That's – Something you might, I don't know if you have it or not yet. You just got to shave it and see if you got that natural glow. I've seen these guys, they got the pale, pale head. I got the red going, which fills it in. Yeah, yeah. But I'll try to shave it. You know, I'll get that close. I don't get the razor bumps at least and stuff like that. So um, I don't know what to tell you on that, you know, but um, just got to try, man. Do I might it. be too, I might be too, too pale for the, for pale. the completely bald. <laughs> yes. I, I, I don't know, man, but you know. Uh, stay out in the sun. Yeah, yeah. Well, man, thank you so much for coming on tonight, dude. It was it was a pleasure. Um, it was a great interview. Um, good luck this year. I'm going to be at as many races as I can get to, so I'm going to come, come see you and meet you in person and stuff like that. Right. But thank you so much for coming on, man. Appreciate it. I appreciate you, man, and everything you're doing. So thank you, and uh, we'll keep in touch. I'll see All right, you. man, thanks. All right, take it easy, buddy.